So right now, um, I'm looking at the GFS model. Look what's gonna happen in the Southwest, especially in Arizona, Baja, California. Hurricane Rosa is gonna form and head towards Arizona. I mean, look at this. Look at this, 989 millibar low right in Arizona. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. I mean, category four hurricane that 145 mile per hour sting winds, 940 millibars. This is incredible. It was only supposed to go up to a three. I said it was gonna become a four. No one believed me. And it, it's now a mid-end category four hurricane with 145 mile per hour sting winds, moving west at eight over very warm waters. I would not be surprised if it becomes a five. In fact, if you look at the storm history, it very quickly became a four. Look at this. In only just about six hours, it became a category four hurricane. It went from a category one, it went from a category two to a category four in only 12 hours. In 12 hours, it went from category two to category four. Talk about rapid intensification. That is very rapid. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's going to be a depression in northern Arizona. This thing is going to flood Arizona. Arizona might get 10, 15 inches of rain from this. Well, not 10, 15, but some areas might get 10, 15, especially in the Tucson Hills and uh, the San Francisco Mountains, um, northern Arizona. I would not be surprised if those areas get... In just completely inundated with rain. And there's gonna be some pretty strong winds out of this too in Arizona, especially some of the higher elevations of Arizona might get wind gusts of 60, 70 miles per hour, perhaps. I mean, look at this. This is a category, that's category four winds right there. And these right here, 108 knots, that's yeah, that's definitely category, uh, that's category three strength. But right here, I'm spotting here, let me see if I could spot a stronger gust. Actually, let me move it around. 111, I think, was tall. 118. That's category four. Look at that. And then this remnants. There, there's a remnants of uh, of Rosa. There's Rosa's remnants. And it's gonna create a big windstorm in Canada. Well, it's gonna merge with another storm. There's Rosa's remnants right there. It's Rosa's. Well, this is Rosa's remnants right there. That's an unrelated storm, but they merge. So Rosa gives its energy to this storm, and you're gonna have hurricane force gusts. Look at this, 80 mile an hour winds. This is probably gonna bring in some very cold temperatures aloft. This is incredible. I mean, look at this. Just look at this. This is absolutely incredible. Probably gonna have a lot of snow with that storm too. Probably at least a foot of snow should fall in that area. Yeah, maybe not as much, but definitely some snow. Yeah, I mean, it's only at the beginning of October and you're already talking about snow. Let's look at sea surface temperature anomalies. Um, uh, current sea surface temperature anomalies. I'll tell you why Rose is going to be so strong when it comes into California. See this right here? Very warm water temperatures along the, along the Central American coast, Mexico coastline, to Baja. California does have below normal water temperatures. But even in the Gulf of California, there's a little batch of average just like the above. El Nino this year is not very strong in fact. Uh, right now this looks, Motokai El Nino would be strong El Nino conditions here, weak El Nino, uh, more neutral to La Nina conditions here. But here's what I'm noticing. Right, there, right here, you see this area of warmer water temperatures? This will actually enhance snowfall for this winter. This keeps up. If the cold, if this pool of cold does not get entrenched into here, this is not like because this is, uh, okay, let's, I'm going to show you the PDL right now, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Um, sorry. Pacific Decadal Oscillation. That's what I want to show you. Here's what a PDO looks like. This is what a PDO looks like. Um, you, you, you could even have a positive PDO during El, El Nino, El, La Nina conditions as well. It's entirely possible. Um, it's rare, but it is possible. You could have you could have neutral conditions with a uh, with warm water temperatures here, warm water temperatures here. That that's going to be extremely positive for snowfall. In fact, when you have a, a PDO, here's what well positive PDO. You have a ridge here. You get a trough on the east coast. You get a ridge. Um, right now, if we're going to look at this, look, you have cooler in central, 
warm along the coast. That's just a hallmark sign of a warm PDL. Are we seeing this? Not quite. In fact, uh, it's quite a... It's not really, because where Hawaii is supposed to be, you're supposed to actually have warm water temperatures. In fact, I mean, I'm noticing some... I'm getting mixed signals right now. But this is... If you want a warm winter, you definitely don't want this all this blue here. You want a, I mean, cold winter. If you want a very cold and snowy winter, you want all this to be warm. Warm, 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 warm. You want this to be warm. You want this to be warm. You want this to be basically the way it is now. And you want this area to be very cold. But you do get some uh, differences. Um, perhaps 2004, 2005 could be a good example. Around this time, we had, we had that year we had a very strong... Uh, positive PNA as a result of of the PDO being in its warm phase. I'll show you what I'm talking about. October, about September 27th, the same time. And actually, not 04 or 05, 14 15. I'm sorry, I got the years confused. Okay, 14 15. In fact, September 29th, about the same time. Look how warm it was here. But December, you see. This is what happened. You had a very typical P a warm PDO. This is the winter that Boston had record snowfall. Record snowfall in January. It was completely crazy. The reason it wasn't too bad is because this wasn't really that much. In fact, in this around this time, guess how this was? Warm. If this was warmer, if this was more like uh, 2002, 2000, this was more like uh, 10, 11, 2010, 2011 was absolutely crazy. I mean, look at this. Yeah, I mean, even though this was, this would typically support a very, not a very snowy winter. If you see how warm it is here, this is why we had so much snow that winter, winter of 2010, 2011. In fact, around this time, at that time, you can see very warm water temperatures in, because Atlantic was in its warm phase. When the Atlantic is in its warm phase, you usually get a lot of snow on the East Coast. Snowstorms, snowstorms, snowstorms. Atlantic right now, it is in its cool phase. In fact, uh, especially the Arctic region, it's in its cool phase. You're getting slight, not average temperatures here. And the new hurricane, hur there's prop Rosa right now. I'm not seeing any upwelling from Rosa yet. That could be it, possibly. I'm um, gonna have to ch recheck its position. Um, in fact, Rosa's position right now is at 116.7 degrees west. So it's east of 120 degrees. So it's going to be in this area where Rosa is. Rosa in this area and don't see any upwelling there. That could be it, possibly, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna look at volcanoes right now, especially Iceland. So I'm, I'm gonna go multiple uh, areas and oh, a small swarm around Oria Fayokit. Um, in fact, Katla had one quake. That's about it. That was about earlier. Mm, let's look at the what glacier is that? I believe that is the Ventikuli glacier, or no? No, that's the one. That's the one that Katla has. There's only two blues, and both are pretty weak, so nothing major happening around Katla. This is Katla right here. And, you know, there's there's been a lot of sensationalism with Katla. You know, and Katla is probably not going to erupt. I mean, you can even see. Look at all this. Look, these are the good ones. These are the ones that are reliable, the big, really good ones. These are unreliable. I mean, look at this. They're, they're threatening. They're hyping everything. They're, and they're talking about CO2 emissions. In fact, when volcanoes emit a lot of CO2 consistently, that's a good thing because there's outgassing. When the outgassing gets trapped, that's what leads to eruptions. It's that pressure that builds up. Of course, if Katla stops the outgassing, that's when it becomes a huge concern. And right now, there's a hurricane heading toward Japan, a typhoon heading toward Japan. Typhoon, um, it was actually, it became a really strong super typhoon. Um, but right now, there's... Um, let's see. There is a big typhoon right now heading toward Japan. Yeah, Typhoon Trami. It's a category, I believe, a category two now, down to about 80 mile an hour. 100. Yeah, it's still 105. It's 
gonna impact Tokyo, it's gonna impact all of Japan. It's basically gonna do the same thing that Irene did. Just it's just gonna impact everybody. Everybody's gonna be hit by this typhoon. There's no avoiding it. Um Uh, let's see, Typhoon Tranny. Let's see. They're saying here, it says mainland's next. Okay. In fact, the only volcano news that I've been getting in the Google search is probably for Catwalk. Yeah. Everything's been for Catwalk, 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 Catwalk. In fact, I'm going to look at Magma Indonesia seismograms. Nothing to really report. There's been a, another aftershock. Uh, and Lombok from the earthquakes of, of July and August, but nothing too impressive. But that's, of course, that's Krakatoa. It's been going off the past few months. Uh, Stromboli eruptions, a couple of vol vol volcanic eruptions, but mostly Stromboli activity. VI1 to VI2 mostly. So far, nothing of a level of three, but Sakurajima did have a level three eruption a few months ago. Um, but now, in terms of volcanism, it's pretty quiet. Nothing too impressive to report. Um, I'm gonna look at spaceweather.com because right now space weather is absolutely really quiet right now. 14 days blank sun, nothing to report. Um, I mean, this is actually a very blank year. We're 58% blank. blank. Uh, in fact, people saying, oh, because we're having a, um, a solar minimum, we should be having global cooling. In fact, look at sea surface temperature anomalies, sorry, a sea surface temperature, um, um, August temperatures for this year. August. In fact, if you go to this global warming skeptic, climate science, climate denier right here. Uh, let's see. Sorry, August 2018. August 2018. Average temperature. You'll see. And he's a climate denier, by the way. So. Uh, and here's what it shows. Okay, actually, let me go to the image. Let me show you. Here is a trend. Just follow the line. There is nothing. Don't follow the bread line. Follow the the average trend. Up, 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 up. Even though solar activity is going down, has been going down for some quite some time, global temperatures are still going up despite solar output going down. Let me show you solar cycle graph. I'm gonna show you something right now. In the past, in recent years. If you see this here, we had a big sunspot. We had over 150 in this in the 50s, uh, about 100. I don't know. If this is more actually correct. Um, so here's the thing. We've had a pretty significant drop. See, the peak was all the way up to 200. So if you look at average, the average peaked about just shy of 160, and here it's just shy of 130. So it's about a 15% reduction in sunspot output. Um, hold on, let me look again. I'm, this is not very good. In fact, actually, this is what I want to show you. Look how high we were in, in the 80, in the in 1950s to the 1980s, and then started going down. So global temperatures should be following a curve down, but they are not. In fact, they are still going up even after all these solar cycles have been cooling down. Global temperatures are still shifting up. We had a La Nina just a year ago, and here's a La Nina cooling right here. La Nina cooling, La Nina cooling. Super El Nino, Super El Nino. Both of these, look. And this is a record. And look, you had such a big drop into La Nina territories here. I mean, into below average champions, and yet, you don't hear. In fact, look at this. They were saying 2005 was one of the warmest years. That was La Nina. And they were talking about 2005, right? It was here. And this is here. Look at this increase. So if, if, you're, if you believe that global warming is fake or doesn't exist or is not man-made, I don't know, you probably have your head in a rock or something. This is wrong. I mean, I don't believe in carbon taxes or any of that stuff, but I do believe that going green is the answer, like buying electric cars, investing more in nuclear, especially thorium. Also, 
going out of the Paris Climate Accord was definitely a bad move. Like it was a, it was a bad move. I don't think it's a bad move. It's a, it is a bad move. There's no thinking. There's no disagreeing with climate. I mean, look at CO2. I'm going to show you right now CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. Right now, CO2.org, CO2.Earth. It's going to show you exactly where it is right now. 406. We are, and this is a man-made. Yeah, 100 years ago we were in the 200s. Now we're above 400. This is the highest we've been at in 850,000 years. Do you want to believe this? Look at, look at. And this is not made up. This is actual. This is present. Let's go back 800,000 years. I guess we were 100 years ago. Um, CO2 concentrations. Before, before Industrial Revolution. Let's look at it, okay? We were at between 180 and 280 parts per million. It didn't even go above 300. Even during the interglacial period, it was never above 300. Natural variations was between 180 and 280, basically. And let's look at this. Okay, global carbon emissions. And it's just going up, skyrocketing. Fact, this is the CO2 concentration. March 1958, 315. In fact, in the 1700s, it was around 200, it said between, fluctuated between 180 and 280. So let's see, 250, 60, 70, 80, so within norms. And it's stable, stable. This is where the Industrial Revolution took place around, just after 1850. And CO2 just goes up, 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 up. And this is actual data from 1958. Actual data. There's no arguing with this. There's no disagreeing with this. This is a fact, okay? This is actual, factual stuff. 2014 projected was going to hit 400 parts per million. Look at this. This is nothing to laugh about. This is nothing to joke about either. Look at this. Just look at this, okay? And you realize what's going on. It's already at 406. We're already off the freaking chart. And you're... And those of you saying climate change doesn't exist, it's man, it's not man-made. I don't know what rock you've been living under. Let me go to, let me take you to National Ice Snow, National Snow Ice Data Center. Just, just want to show you something. Okay, let's go to show all. Okay, it's gonna show you all the years from 1979, which is. Let's go all the way down. This is 1979 right here. All the way up here. 1979, 1981. Let's see. 1979 is right there. See that little bottom down about 600, about just under 7 million. All right. Now let's go back up. 7 million. All right. Let's go back to hide all, hide everything. So we will decide to show 2012, which is the lowest. 2007, the second lowest. And this year, 2018. 2017, which we, the, we started a very late recovery this year. Let's go back down to 16. We're definitely doing better, but very late recovery this year. Let's go down to 15. The best year we had, 12 was actually 13 was actually I think the best year 15 or, it was probably 14 or 13 let's see yeah I think let's go 11 we're also doing a little better than this year um 2010 was about the last time we got to that level see let's reset the zoom let's zoom in right there see in 2010 let's go back to all the way down to 91 see 91 was a good year 79 was another good, very good year. I mean, look at this. In fact, the best year was actually 1980, which was way above 7 million. Big increase and from 19, increase of about half a million square kilometers. And they were talking about how the increase from 2000, 
uh, 7 2008 was just was huge it was miraculous it was we're gonna have a new ice age i remember the sensation they were saying thing oh it's because of of global cooling of all this other stuff right i remember that all uh, righty and it was only an increase of uh, half million give or take but the increase between 2012 and 2013 was definitely huge where was it yeah yeah 500,000 Oh, 2012, 2013. Oh, yeah, that increase was over a million. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was big, 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 big. Huge increase. Let's see. Increase between 2012 and 2013. Definitely sustainable. Definitely su substantial. Almost 2 million. That was probably the biggest increase. But what happened in 14? Same. 15, decrease. 16, decrease. 17, increase. 18, another decrease. Uh, you know, so we're not really recovering, okay? We're not really recovering. We entered a new norm. So any small increase we've seen as, oh, we're having an increase. But if you go all the way back, we're never gonna get back to these levels. Antarctica, which in 2012 had record sea ice, right now is doing horrible. In fact, we're not doing good at all with Antarctica. The Antarctic sea ice is doing horrible this year, just like last year and the year before. So the fact that climate scientists or working their butts off trying to explain how global warming is a disaster we need to happen how scientists are not doing it or you know how the how politicians not doing anything to solve it it is that is the biggest disaster i mean look what's going to happen huge hurricane going to hit in Baja california bring flooding rain to arizona and the scientists are probably going to say oh it's probably going to be nothing in fact Look at this, you're gonna have flooding rains in Arizona. Even as it's still a hurricane, you're gonna have rain in California, rain in Arizona. I mean, San Francisco, there's probably not gonna be too much rain from this, but still, in Los Angeles. I mean, Los Angeles might get some rain from this. Let's check the GFS. How much rain does the GFS have for California from this system? The GFS has about, just a little bit. Not too much. And then look at this, another one. Jeez, two hurricanes in a row. This is incredible. I mean, is that a, is that a, jeez Louise, this is just incredible. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a disaster in, um, in the Southwest. This is gonna be, there's over like 20, 30 inches of rain. This is, look at this. I mean, look at this, some of these rainfall totals. This is in red. This is not going to be 10 inches of rain. This is ensembles, basically. Look at what GFS is having at the end of this forecast period. Going 10, let's go 15 days out. Look at this. Some areas will be getting a foot of rain almost. Some areas, this is going to be, this is going to be a very, very bad situation for them. Something that they haven't experienced, I think, in, in decades, perhaps. Here's the thing, you're gonna have a, hur a huge hurricane going to Baja, California. It's gonna emerge over the Gulf of California, which is very warm, mind you, so it might actually be strengthened a little bit. It's gonna head into Texas, you're gonna, yeah. There's a possible little low there. Might, might get named, might just be a, a wave, I don't know. But the fact that this is going to be, the fact that in October you have a secondary peak, that could be a little problematic there. See, that actually might be a pretty big system. I don't know. But let's look at the ensembles. Let's see what they have. Let's see if anything significant forms there around that time. Nothing really, no. Anything on the ensemble means, let's see. Nothing really, nope. I'm gonna go to spaghetti models right now. Show you something. I'm gonna show you the uh, this the uh, Union Madden oscillation. It's all the way here. We right now are in the greens, which is more of subsidence of uh, less formation. But there could be something that could stir up. This is why you're having so many hurricanes with typhoons right now in the Pacific. It's very positive right now there. This is and 
if this if this is going to be over here if this is actually going to hold its strength by the time it gets here i get some pretty big systems well thank you for watching uh, have a great day and i'll join you next time i'll start making daily videos um once i get out once i'm done with my classes it should be probably next semesters when i will finish all my classes and then i'm probably gonna wait a couple months and then i'm gonna go up hopefully to vermont to Linden State College to get my broadcast, uh, to get my degree in broadcast meteorology. Hopefully, you'll be seeing me on TV. I'll be presenting these forecasts on television, and I'll also be a storm chaser. So yeah, I already do. I already chase some storms. I also caught a video of a very close to ground lightning strike yesterday. Cloud to ground lightning strike. I didn't actually capture the bolt on video, but it was very close. It was a very loud thunderclap at the tail end of the, th of the thunderstorm, um, and I will be posting that next. Thank you for watching.